Hi, I'm Dr. Suman Singh, consultant in Obs and Gynae. I've been practicing for the last 18 years and uh, I am currently associated with Cloud9 Jainagar. There are many causes for uh, recurrent pregnancy loss, uh, some of which is as simple as a maternal and paternal age. And we know that uh, as the age advances, the risk for uh, recurrent pregnancy loss increases. So we find more risk in women more than 35 years and in men more than 40 years. Also, the history of previous miscarriages increases the risk of uh, um, pregnancy losses in each successive pregnancy. So the risk can be as uh, low as 19% after one pregnancy loss and it can increase to almost 40% after three pregnancy losses. Then APLA, that is anti-phospholipid antibodies, uh, is the most important treatable cause of recurrent pregnancy losses and it includes anti-cardiolipin antibodies, lupus anticoagulant, anti-beta-2 glycoprotein 1 antibodies. So this is again a very very important cause of recurrent pregnancy losses. Um, it is typically characterized by three or more pregnancy losses that happen less than 10 weeks of pregnancy or one or more pregnancy losses after 10 weeks of pregnancy in a morphologically normal fetus or preterm births less than 34 weeks which are owing to placental disease. In some cases, we have genetic causes playing a role, especially because of parental chromosomal rearrangement, especially when one partner has a balanced reciprocal like a Robertsonian translocation or if there are embryonal chromosomal abnormalities. Some women have anatomical causes that are seen in almost 5 to 10 percent of cases, especially if there are malformations of the uterus like the arcuate uterus or a septate uterus and this can cause pregnancy losses in almost 30 to 50 percent of the cases. Some women have cervical weaknesses uh, typically called in a medical parlance as cervical incompetence. Now a cervix is a lower portion of the uterus and it's supposed to hold the pregnancy in place but if somebody has a weakness then they have repeated pregnancy losses typically seen in the second trimester of pregnancy. Other causes in the uterus which can cause uh, pregnancy losses would be uh, polyps, submucous myomas and intrauterine adhesions. Also there are certain endocrine factors like uncontrolled diabetes, uncontrolled thyroid imbalances or even polycystic ovaries which can contribute to RPL. Certain immunological factors have been researched more in recent times. So we find that these women tend to have more of abnormal natural killer cell activities and they also have increase in the T helper 1 cytokine activity plus they can also have a deficiency or an absence of the blocking antibodies. With the current uh, increase in unhealthy lifestyle practices, obesity has also uh, come up as an important cause of recurrent pregnancy losses. Infections as a cause of RPL are not so many. In the earlier days, people were testing for uh, torch panel that is the toxoplasma, rubella, cytomegalovirus and the herpes but currently we are very clear that this does not contribute to uh, recurrent pregnancy losses and hence testing for this is not required. However, bacterial vaginosis should be treated. There are certain conditions called inherited thrombophilias like fatophile laden mutation or a protein C deficiency, protein S deficiency or a prothrombin gene mutation which can cause multiple microthrombi in the uteroplacental circulation and this can cause recurrent abortion in some cases. So all these could be the various causes for recurrent pregnancy loss.